Good afternoon and salam ibu petiwiku. Two mass shootings at crowded public places in Texas and Ohio claim at least 29 lives in less than 24 hours and left scores of people wounded. A shocking carnage even in a country accustomed to gun violence. In the Texas border city of El Paso, a gunman opened fire Saturday morning in a shopping area. The attack killed 20 and critically wounded more than two dozen. Hours later, in Dayton, Ohio, a gunman wearing body armor and carrying extra magazine opened fire in a nightlife area, killing nine and injuring at least 26 people. The suspected shooter was shot to death by responding officers. The attacks came less than a week after a 19-year-old gunman killed three people and injured 13 others at the popular Gilroy Garlic Festival in California before dying of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. According to the APUSA Today Northeastern University Mass Murder Database that tracks homicides, the shootings were the 21st and 22nd mass killings of 2019 in the U.S. Including the two latest attacks, 125 people had been killed in the 2019 shootings. U.S. Defense Secretary Mark Esper said yesterday China is destabilizing the Indo-Pacific, charging Beijing with predatory economics, intellectual property theft and weaponizing the global commons. The comments by Esper on his first overseas trip as U.S. Defense Secretary threatened to inflame already heightened tensions between Washington and Beijing as they wage an escalating trade war. China claims a large parts of the South China Sea, through which roughly 3.4 trillion in shipping passes each year. Countries including Malaysia, the Philippines, Taiwan and Vietnam contest the territorial claims. This has raised concerns with the region and the United States is challenging Chinese maritime hegemony and seeking stronger ties with nations pushing back against Beijing. As per said, they firmly believe no one nation can or should dominate the Indo-Pacific and they are working alongside their allies and partners to address the region's press pressing security needs. The European Union's chief Brexit negotiator, Michel Barnier, must go back to the bloc's leaders to change the terms of the talks because Britain's parliament will not accept the current deal. Writing in the mail on Sunday newspaper, British Brexit Minister Stephen Barclay said the political realities had changed since Barnier's instructions were set after Britain voted to leave the, U the EU more than three years and that his mandate should reflect those differences. With or without a deal, Britain's new Prime Minister Boris Johnson has pledged to leave the EU on October 31st and has told the bloc there is no point in new talks unless negotiators are willing to drop the so-called Northern Irish backstop agreed with his predecessor, Theresa May. Barney, however, said the EU will not renegotiate the divorce deal or withdrawal agreement including the backstop and insurance policy to prevent a return to a hard border between the British province of Northern Ireland and EU member Ireland. The backstop which would come into play if a future trading arrangement falls short of keeping the border open has been the main stumbling block in the Brexit talks and one of the reasons why Britain's parliament rejected the deal three times. Johnson has vowed to get rid of the backstop and the new government has taken a hard line with the EU, saying it was turbo-boosting preparation for a no-deal Brexit if the bloc fails to agree alternative arrangements for the border. Well, that is all for me. I'm Yumes Radio 40 with Sarawak. Anytime, anywhere.